Disneyland is your land. Here age relives fond memories of the past. And here youth may savor the challenge and promise of the future. Disneyland is dedicated to the ideals, the dreams, and the hard facts that have created America with the hope that it will be a source of joy and inspiration to all the world. Hello princesses, Ray here again with another face character makeup tutorial. This time I'm very excited because I'm going to be doing my absolute favorite Disney princess, the wonderful Aurora. And then once again, this is just my personal interpretation of the makeup and the style of makeup that I like to do, but I tried to sort of retrofit it to the park's makeup and make it more of a tutorial so that it's easier to emulate and enjoy. So without further ado, let's get into the look. To start off this look, I wanted to go in with my foundation and really just spread it all over my face to get a more even distribution so that everything looks kind of similar. And I really made sure that I concentrated it in places that I wanted to sort of conceal. So that would be my under eyes, any acne I have, and just anywhere where there's redness so that I can really just start off with a super even base. Already, we had a little oopsie with my foundation. <laughs> but that aside, I'm going to go in with my powder and I'm going to just kind of set my skin tone and make sure everything is nice and even. While this is absolutely an optional step, I do like to apply this powder pretty liberally just to give myself more of an even canvas to work on so that everything is cohesive. Alrighty, that being done, um, there is still going to be a bit of a divide between like where I put the powder and my hairline because I don't want to get powder on those little baby hairs. And once again, I want to clarify, I'm not filtering anything in this video. The reason my face kind of looks weird is because the exposure on my camera is not responding well to my face not being shiny anymore. So what I'm going to do after that is I'm going to go in and take this blush brush and this cream lipstick that I probably shouldn't be using, but I'm going to use anyways, and I'm going to do blush. Unlike the other classical princesses, Aurora doesn't have too much blush on her face, and her whole look is more neutral in terms of coloring and opaqueness. Next, what I'm going to do, and this is obviously a totally optional step, is I'm going to do highlighter. Um, I had like a, a nice blue tinted highlighter in my Cinderella video, but this time for Aurora. Person, wow, okay. And that's just gonna kind of add a little bit of shimmer. Obviously, you can apply as much or as little highlighter as you like. And then the thing with this highlighter is it actually is slightly darker than my skin, so it looks a little bit weird. So I've got this other powder highlighter. It's so like weird in texture. It feels very nice. Take that and I'm gonna go over the liquid highlighter with it. And the cream highlighter just to kind of set it. And there we go. And then if you think that's a little too bright, you can just take powder and just dull it ever so slightly. And there you go. After that, I decided that I'm gonna go ahead and start on the eyeshadow. I think this is the step that I spend the most of my time on, not because it's hard, just because I'm very much a perfectionist, and when you're just working off pictures, sometimes it takes a little longer for me to get the desired effect that I want. But I did learn from Cinderella, and starting with a neutral, kind of lighter base is really helpful because it gives the color something to sit on. So I went and put that all over my lids, and then I took a kind of warmer toned pink shadow, and put that into my crease, and I think I messed up a little bit there. 
but basically I'm just going to try and blend that out as much as I can because Aurora's look is very much natural just with pink accents in the outer crease to add more dimension, I guess. And so after that I went in with a darker pink shadow and kind of added a bit more to that so it didn't get super washed out in comparison to the eyeliner and the mascara. And then I also took sort of a darker, not darker, but um, a relatively dark brown color. Alrighty, I think I've got a decent start on there. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go back with another little bit of highlighter. I'm gonna kind of add some sparkliness and then I'm going to go in with the eyeliner and get that started. I tried to go lighter on the highlighter, but because of the palette that I was using that was a little bit difficult to obtain because it is so bright so if it comes out too bright you can always just put a little bit of powder on it and then I decided to start on my eyeliner which I actually managed to do pretty quickly and I was proud of myself for that but you just want to do a little swoop at the ends just so you can tell that it's there and put mascara on your top and bottom lashes. Alrighty, and so what I'm gonna do after that is I'm going to go and touch up my face makeup that may have been kind of washed out in the process of me doing my eye makeup. I feel like my voice sounds totally different for some reason, so that's interesting, but what I'm gonna basically do is just go over any areas that I may have messed up while doing my eye makeup, and then I'm also going to reapply some blush so that you can not that much. Well, okay. I'm a clown. Literally and figuratively. But I was gonna say. <laughs> oh god. Anyways, I was gonna reapply a little bit of blush so that uh, my eyes wouldn't be so dark and so that my face would still be mostly the focal point. And I kind of messed that up, but you know what? A little bit of powder fixes everything. And now we're gonna go in with, again, an optional step here, something that I like to do and something that is in the parks, false eyelashes. And again, just gotta take your glue and just try your best, is what I usually say. This application definitely was not as smooth as I wanted it to be, but you're really just going to want to make sure that it's as close to your lash line as possible, and you want to really pat it down. <laughs> Alright, as you can see, they're a little uneven, so I'm going to go and once they dry a bit more, just because the placement was a little bit off, and I don't want to take them off, once they are dry, I'm going to put on a little bit more mascara, and then I'm going to take eyeliner right down this inner sort of ridge of my eye to make the lash band blend a little bit more so that it doesn't look like I've just slapped some falsies onto my face. I find that putting a bit of mascara on the lashes helps them blend more into your actual eyelashes and then I also put eyeliner in the inner corners of my eyes to make that lash band a bit less noticeable. Alrighty, last thing I'm going to do is the lips and so lipstick like the rest of her makeup so I'm going to go in with this lip liner that I use for everything but very lightly because it is darker than I remember it being. Obviously for this step you can line your lips in whichever way is the most comfortable to you. I kind of underline because I do like my lips to be thinner and I don't like a ton of lip liner in the corner that way my smile looks more like a smile. And so after that I went in with this lighter lip gloss and because it is not a lipstick and I personally like more matte lipsticks I did blot it off a little bit to get rid of some of that heavy color and I also went back over the area around it with powder and relined it and then I actually put powder on top of the lip gloss as well just to make it more of a matte color. After a few more finishing touch-ups here is the finished look. This round was definitely a bit more challenging, but I had so much fun doing it, and I hope you had fun watching it as well. Remember, if you try any of these looks, you can always tag us, and we'll be more than happy to check them out. Goodbye, princesses, and have a magical day.